I remember to hit record. You didn't remember. I remember. All right. So if I want to find this integral for right now, we haven't technically learned how to find this integral because we haven't learned the fundamental theorem of calculus yet. Well, we, what we would have to do is take the limit. This is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of, of, the, of the summation of as k equals 1, 2, and n of f of ci times delta x. And this is the same integrals we've been dealing with. Now, um, at least once today you're going to wish you had a piece of scrap paper to work it out on. Um, this one I was able to fit in pretty decently into the space that I gave you. Uh, your quiz, which I have set to be a week from today, Friday. Okay, your quiz for the one, I have one question where I have you do this process. I gave you the entire page to do it. So I learned from my mistake in terms of me not giving you enough space. Okay. So uh, as I'm going through these, the first thing I would do each time here is, uh, is find delta x and find uh, the the opening x value of my interval, okay? So delta x is always going to be uh, b minus a. So in this case, that would be 1 minus negative 2 over n. So 3 over n. And then... Ci is just going to be my initial starting x, which is that negative 2, plus k times delta x, which is going to be k times 3 over n. So when I ask you to find this limit, what I'm really asking you to do is take the limit as n approaches infinity, of the sum from k to 1, of, of from 1 to n, of 2 times negative 2 plus 3k over n. That's my f of c times 3 over n. That's my delta x. How are we feeling so far? All right. What do you guys want to do to make this look better? Pull out a 6 over n. Pull out a 6 over n. Okay. So what Maggie's talking about is the 2 and the 3 over n. I could write as 6 over n out front. I'm cool with that. Okay. And I'd be left with negative 2 plus 3k over n. Now what? Okay. So I'll have the summation is k equals 1 to n of negative 2 plus, and I'm going to go ahead and say 3 over n times the summation from 1 to n of k. And what is the summation of negative 2? What will that work out to be? Uh, 2n. Negative 2n. Plus, I'll bring down my 3 over n. 
What about the summation of the k? n times n plus 1 n times n plus 1 all over 2. And from here, I'd probably distribute that 6 over n. Cool? So now we've got the limit as n approaches infinity of negative 12 plus 18n n plus 1 over 2n squared. And just for fun, guys, are you guys okay if I call this 18n squared plus 18n on top instead? Okay. So now, can I take this limit as is? I feel like we know what we're going to get, right? What's going to happen to the negative 12? It's going to remain negative 12. What about 18n squared over 2n squared? What's going to happen to that? It's just going to equal positive 9. So what's my final answer? Negative 3. And this, guys, is how I'm going to ask you about the summations. I'm just going to say, hey, using the area go ahead and figure this out. Everybody good? All right, and it turns out then that the definite integral is the area in between the function and the x-axis at all times. Cool? So if I asked you what is the area bounded between this graph and the x-axis, what's the very, very first thing we need to do? Look at the graph. The graph looks something like this, y'all. So the area I want you to find in that case is, oh boy. This area. So that make, might make me want to issue an interval, an integral. But I need to know the bounds of my integral. So we essentially need to know, well, what are these two points? Yeah? Anyone have any ideas? Zero and four. Zero and four. And essentially what we're looking for is where, what are the zeros of the function? And if I factor out x, I have x and four minus x, which will equal zero at zero and then four. All right, so this is what I need to calculate. And to do this, we're going to start with what is delta x in this scenario then? If I'm going from 0 to 4. 4 over n. We good? What is C sub i? For k over n. For k over n. Because it's technically 0 plus that, but then the, it's 0, so we don't worry about it. All right. So let's set up the summation. We want to take the limit as n approaches infinity 
of the summation of k equals 1 to n. Okay? Guys, tell me what I should write here. It's always f of ci times delta x. That's what I got. Though I have switched to using K so that the I versus I squared is less confusing. But I would totally take I as long as it's like I equals one to infinity or whatever. Do we have questions yet? Okay, everything else is a, what do you want to do next to try to simplify this? Hmm? Uh, for n, or could you make that 16 over n? We've got 16k over n minus um, 16k squared over n squared. that feel okay? Yeah, this time I'm not going to because when I was working these, it felt a little bit better, like as I started working it, to look at it this way. And then pull those constants out. Yeah, sorry. And then pull those constants out. That felt a little bit better for some reason. Because then what I did is I pulled those constants out individually. I don't know, it just felt, it worked better for me. You guys want to try next? I know it's unfair because I can scroll, zoom in and out. Um, not going to take the limit yet. That K becomes N, N plus 1 over 2. K squared becomes n, n plus 1, 2n plus 1, over 6, I think. Totally, it's not. I don't know what you're seeing, but I see a third there. 
You don't see it? Most likely is I didn't have the showing and I was like misremembering. All right, so what's the limit? So I think it's worth noting, like as I look at this first um, term, what's the highest exponent on the top going to be? Like I'm going to end up with like an n squared here, yeah? So if we kind of remember like for the limits, it ends up only the, those lead terms are really the only ones that end up mattering for a limit towards infinity at least. Is this okay? So really this is like... Even though this term is not this, it kind of is. Like, as n approaches infinity anyway, like for really, really super huge values of n, that's going to work out to being about 64n squared over 2n squared. So what's that term going to become? 32. Now, if you guys want... We can multiply it all the way out. So that would get the limit as n approaches infinity. This would become 64n squared plus 64n over 2n squared. And likewise, this will become 64n. Uh, let's see. 64n times n squared plus 64, and then taking all of that times 2n plus 1. Like we can do all this. Are you guys with me that I'm going to end up with like a 128n to the third? And then let's see. 128 plus 64. 192n plus 64n all over 6n cubed. Everybody good? And technically, there's parentheses there. That whole thing's being subtracted. Now, when I go to take the limit, are these two pieces going to become important? Okay. So I would be comfortable if, if, as you look at this, you saw the 64 the 64 n, n, and 2 n is going to be just become that 128 n cubed, and not worrying about distributing the rest of it, because n is going to be approaching infinity, it's not going to matter. Do you guys get what I'm saying there? I'm trying to cut you back on some work. And where it's coming from is those lead terms are what's going to give me that piece that helps me take that limit. And the rest of it, while important anywhere else, is not that important as n approaches infinity. Cool? All right, so what's my limit? What happened? What's this one as n approaches infinity? 32 minus... Sixty-four thirds, cool. And we should end up with thirty-two thirds is my answer. Compared to two days ago, are we starting to feel okay with the summations? Yeah, what's up? Well? Do you want me to zoom in since it's kind of tiny now? No problem. First day versus third day on the summations gets a, a little bit better, right? All right. The only thing left with the definite integrals are, are you guys will find this one incredibly pleasing comparatively to, you know, what we've been doing, okay? All right. So... 
if we think about the integral as area, okay? If I graph y equals the cosine of x, and I say, what is the area between pi and pi? The answer is zero. So, first rule, nice easy rule about definite integrals since we're talking about area. If these two numbers match, the width of my interval is zero, so the area of my interval is zero. zero. Good so far? I told you you would like this part, okay? What about this one? This looks terrible, doesn't it? So for up here, we did the area from zero to four. And we got 32 over three. Do you notice that I chose the exact same function here? But now I'm working backwards. So we can kind of think of it as our width as a negative width because it's going in the other direction. So what is this integral? Negative 32 over three. How are we feeling? All right, now one more. Essentially, with absolute values in particular, you kind of have to think about absolute values as those two pieces, right? Because what do we know about the graph of y equals the absolute value of x? We have the negative and the positive, okay? So as I look at this, I'm going to say this is the integral from negative 2 to 0. And when I'm on that interval, the absolute value of x is equal to the negative of what x is. Plus the integra integral from 0 to 3 of positive x. So we're allowed to take an, inter an interval and split it up into two pieces. I chose to use 0 as the dividing line because the function itself makes that appropriate. Now, without cheating and using fundamental theorem of calculus, which is how you guys, what you guys learned last year, okay, could we very, very quickly come up with the answer to this? Instead of using the limits, what do we know about this interval or this integral? Just this one looks is this triangle, where this is negative 2, but the distance is 2, right? It's above the x-axis. This is 2. Do you guys see what I'm saying here? So to answer the, this particular integral, you really just find the area of that triangle. What is the area of that triangle? It would be, uh, I don't know, 2 times 2 over 2. 2. Plus, if I did it on the other side for this one, this would be 3, this would be 3. We do 3 times 3 over 2, which is 9, 9 over 2, which is 4 and a half, I don't know, 6.5, something like that. Well, the area isn't negative because it's above the x-axis. Okay. Are we okay? I feel like we could be done. You guys want to be done for today? Yes. You, theoretically, no, not theoretically, guys. In your packet, 